Human Factors Cast, Episode 6. We've neglected design, so let's cover it. Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Here are your hosts, Nick Rome and Billy Hall. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Human Factors Cast, Episode 6. Billy, we're on Episode 6 already. I am surprised you haven't killed me yet. <laughs> you know what else is... This has got to be the favorite episode, right? Because you know what else is the favorite Episode 6? Uh, Return of the Jedi. Oh, you got me there. You got me there. Okay, yeah, right. I, was, I was thinking there for a sec you were going to say Empire, which would have been totally acceptable because they're, in my book, tied. I like, I like both of them. And say what you want about Ewoks. Hey, you know what? I really kind of dug Ewoks. I found out, though, that they never actually said the name Ewoks in they the didn't. movie. They didn't. And, and here, okay, so we're not going to have any Ewoks in this show. But anyway, you're listening to Nick Rome, and your co-host. Billy Hall. Hi. You're Billy, Billy Hall's your co-host. <laughs> I'm your host, Nick Rome. Um, and today, we're going to be talking about design. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, I mean, you know, in the intro, you hear human factors, psychology, and, and design. And design, yeah. And but- we've covered human factors. We've covered a bit of psychology. Yeah, 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 we've, yeah. We've covered a bit of design, but I feel like, you know, we owe it to... It always feels like design is like the toppings on this pizza that we have. Like, you could eat a cheese pizza, but... But it's not nearly as good, good without as... the pepperoni, oh, olives, awesome. mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that's the design part. Yes, I completely agree. And you know what? Uh, we have some exciting news Billy. What's the exciting news? You know, by the time this show goes live, mm-hmm. we should be up on a ton of podcast directories. Yes. Uh, and on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So now, I'm pretty sure you can find us on iTunes. We're on the Google Play Store for sure. We're on SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. Stitcher, TuneIn, Spreaker, Blueberry, and Player FM. That is a lot of places. I mean, it's going to be really easy for people to find our podcast, which is great, because we'll be reaching more people around the world. I completely agree. And you know what? If if we've missed one, um, I, I thought I was pretty thorough, but we may have missed one, and I know there are a ton of apps that will find these things for you, like Podcast Addict. Oh, I love Podcast Addict. There's a ton of them out there, but you know, if we, if we missed a distribution service, please let us know. We'll try to get it up there ASAP so you can listen to us through your favorite medium. Mm-hmm. Um, we need your help spreading the word of Human Factors Cast. So, you know, it's all about that word of mouth. Let your friends know about us. And and you know what? Once we're out on iTunes, please leave us a good review. Let everyone know, you know, how how you feel about us. Yeah, um, you know, tell us what you think also. Because the show evolves around you. Yeah, you know, the show is really about you guys and what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we'll provide some content and, and kind of shape it. But... We, we we try to be truly interactive with you guys. Um, mm. So so please let us know what you want to hear. Uh, but anyway, Billy, our topic today. It is design. You know, we've talked about it before, but I've always been really curious about the design aspect. You know, like you said, it's in our intro, and we've covered it briefly, but it's just, it's the toppings on the larger pizza. Right, right. And, but... We need to incorporate elements of design, and we haven't talked about it enough. Right. So today's topic is design. Design. What do you know about design? Well, I mean, like, I know graphical design, you know, making pretty pictures. I know about interior design, you know, putting up nice curtains. but And then, comp- and then website design, you know, pin- putting up a nice website, making it look pretty and appealing to the people. But how is a big thing? Right, yeah. So, so design's a really important, pro, uh, like, really important process in any any piece of um, any system, any product, anything. It's, it's your modern day storefront. It is, and and you know what's interesting too is is design can be driven by a lot of things. A design can be driven by the requirements for a project, mm-hmm. uh, like it must do this, this, and this, and those are the only things you have to design. Mm-hmm. Uh, a product can be, um, or uh, the design of something can be shaped by uh, even even something as um, you know, even as something. Not, I don't want to say as simple, but um, let me try a guess here. Just 
you know, tell me if I'm right or wrong on this. Like, for example, I go to a lot of, like, uh, forum boards, things like that, things like that, right? Okay. And a lot of people like to use dark blacks and colors, and I feel that that's a bad design choice, you know, things like that. Is that kind of the idea of, like, at least for, like, web addresses and things like that on design? I'm kind of getting to that. I, I, what I was trying to say earlier was, oh. um, I feel like design can be driven by the need to look good. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's not always this marriage of looking good and functionality. Mm-hmm. Right? Sometimes something can look great on the screen, but it could operate like, like trash. Right, 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 like it, right. It, doesn't, it doesn't work. Uh, but it looks pretty. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, uh, all these things um, are, are sort of go into design. And, and design can even be driven by the user requirements. And that's that's what a human factors practitioner would do or somebody who um, engages in UX uh-huh. or uh, user research. They are typically helping, aiding the design by, um, you know, determining what kind of requirements the user has. But we'll get into that later. Right? Okay. Okay. All right. But let's start at the beginning. Like, break it down. What is design? At its basic level, right, design is any sort of um, plan, mm-hmm. right, or, or mock-up or idea, basically, to show kind of what the finished product might look like or how it might function um, or how something works within the thing, right? Bef- and this is all before it's made. Mm-hmm. So all this stuff, it, it's kind of the planning of, um, you know, how something in the end would look. Okay, so websites, apps, uh, 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 a way a controller or a cell phone looks. Right, well, yeah, the design part of it would be, you know, drawing what the cell phone looks like or mocking up what a website might look like Mm -hmm. uh, before you actually go out and code it up. Okay. You talked about the idea of, like, engineering. What is the design process in engineering? So there's this kind of cyclical um, process which which people who design these systems go through. Um, And... Basically, what they do is they go through and identify what needs and what constraints they're working with, right? So this is this is what I was talking about with the requirements, right? So, like, what does this thing need to do? What am I limited by? Am I limited by a budget? Almost always. Um, am I limited by, you know, the technology that's, that's around it? Mm-hmm. Almost always. Am I limited by the circuitry within it, you know, it, the electronic component, like what am I limited by? So you, you first need to sort of identify what you're working with, right? You need to get all your materials together and say, okay, this is what I have, right? And this is what it needs to do. So the needs. Yes, you got it. So then what you need to do is you, you need to go in and sort of uh, take a look at what the problem is. Um, sort of with everything as a whole like what's what's the problem with how they do it now what's the problem with um you know putting these things together in such a way that's going to make it easy for this person to use you gotta you gotta research what problems people are having with the current design and why you're designing another solution so like um so is that what you do as a scientist do you research and uh, research and find the problems or how to make things better yeah, we'll get into human-centered design a little bit later, but that is basically their bread and butter. Okay, um, okay. So, yeah, we work closely with designers, but, again, we'll get into that a little later. So after they research the problem, right, mm-hmm. you need to uh, sort of ideate. And this is this is a fancy word for saying you need to generate ideas. Did you, you make need... that word up? No, it's a real word. Mm-hmm. I swear. Okay, okay. Look it up. <laughs> um, you basically need to sort of develop different solutions to this problem, right? You researched the problem. Mm-hmm. First off, you, you understood what your needs were, and then you researched the, or your needs and what constraints you're working with, and then you researched the problem. And now what you're doing is you're developing possible solutions based off those needs, based off what problem you need to solve. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's, it's like adding another layer to this pizza. Yeah. There you go. I'm bringing it back. You need to add another layer to this every time. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So after you've developed these solutions, what you need to do is is kind of plan out how you're going to reach these solutions using the constraints and the needs that you need to meet 
right? Mm -hmm. uh, using that information that you researched. Mm -hmm. um, so once you've made a plan of action, mm -hmm. then you go and build a prototype. Now, this is like a very early version of whatever the final product is. And the idea with the prototype is that um, it's functional enough to test whether or not it'll work properly. Okay, okay. Okay? Um, so, so again, you got the needs and constraints, you went and researched the problem, then you developed a solution, you go and make a plan for that solution, then you build a prototype off of that plan, right? Mm -hmm. Now you're going to test that prototype. Mm -hmm. You're going to go and test it and to see if it works. You're just right, right, right. Make sure this thing works. Find, find Jill and Joe and ran, uh, Q Random or Q Public. And and test it out on them. See what they think about it. Get the feedback. You can. You can do that. And that's advised. That's called usability testing. We'll cover that later. <laughs> Not everyone does that. Oh, okay. Sometimes the developer goes, I know how this works. Uh, and this is a very dangerous trap. And this is part of the reason why we do this show is to let our, our listeners know that if you are developing something, don't test it yourself. Because you know how this thing should work. And you know how... You know, if you press this sequence of buttons, that's how you get there. But if you're developing this thing for other people, let them test it. We'll get into that later. It might be intuitive to you. Right, exactly, because you built it. You mm -hmm. know what's going on. Mm. So, it, yeah, you test it, right? Either with yourself, which is not advised, or with actual people who might use the thing. Right. Um, so then after you've tested it, you kind of evaluate what the results were, right? Like, oh, that did not work as intended. Or, um, you know, this button did something way weird. So what you do is you uh, sort of redesign, mm -hmm. right, and, and kind of fix those solutions and then go all the way back to the beginning and, and sort of, all right, does this meet my needs and constraints? And then, you know, do I need to research more? Basically, it's, it's called iterative design where you keep going back through this process and you keep going through it and say, look, here's a problem. I tested it. It didn't work as I thought, so I'm going to go back, uh, fix it, and then retest it again, and it just keeps going through the cycle. So just kind of like creative writing, or or the idea of like a first draft, second draft, third draft type of thing. You go through there, you you keep perfecting it. You might perfect the glaring errors, but yeah. it might not work, or it might just be too long, or too wordy, or things like that. Same thing right. with the idea of creating something. Yeah, you got it. Okay, okay, okay. So what so, do you think? What do you think the developers of No Man's Sky were thinking when they went through and hired a bunch of QA testers the day after that thing went live? They had, they did that after the fact. They did it after the thing. Launched. I think it was the idea that maybe they only got a certain amount of money. I bet they were exhausted and tired. I mean, they were working long into the night. That was one of their constraints. Yeah, there you go. You're right. What did you think of No Man's Sky? It's the best thing I ever played. Really? Yeah. It's one of the best things I've ever you're, played. You're that crazy about it. I love it. I, I I think it's mostly because of the fact that I don't own a computer, so maybe I haven't been able to get used to the idea of a MMO type of world or things like that, but the idea of exploring, being an actual explorer, having to deal with actual things like that, it's pretty amazing. You dig it? Man, my predictions last week were way off. You think like, so? Yeah, well, I was saying like there's raiding in the center of the galaxy and... and <laughs> You know, we're going to find each other, but that's clearly... We weird. don't know. We don't know what's in the center yet. No one's gotten there yet. Yeah, they have. There's a couple people who are... I'm not going to spoil it for our listeners, but there's a couple people who have gotten there. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty intense. Have they showed? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm aware of what's at the center. I don't want to know. I know you don't. I'm really... It's... I'm more excited now, though. <laughs> okay. I swear, if it's a monkey on a unicycle, it's, at this point, I don't care. It's not that. It's not that. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm kind of lukewarm to it now. I'm just going through to get the trophies at this point. But, you know, a year from now, it might be a totally different game. Yeah, Minecraft, when it started out, was pretty much just stacking blocks on top of things. Yeah, Minecraft's a totally different game than it was in the beta. Oh, definitely. So, all right, let's bring it back to design. Uh, all right, all right. So, when making a product, where does the design process come in? Well, so this process that I just, des just described, right, the, you know, um, all those steps, right, that we just went through, that kind of plays in uh, throughout the entire thing. And one thing you want to do is you want to make sure you do 
heavy design towards the beginning of a project, Mm -hmm. especially with human-centered design. And again, we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, yeah, the the design process should be happening throughout the thing. Mm -hmm. You should always be revisiting, like, is this working? Yes or no? Um, Do I need to change things? Do I need to go through and edit? Mm -hmm. You know, and and the life cycle of of, uh, the development of a product can be from days Mm -hmm. or, or hours even in a hackathon. Yeah. Um, to two years, right? And and you need to incorporate design in all steps of it. So never even stop. from the planning stages of especially what we're going to do, especially in the planning stages. That is oh. where it is most crucial. Okay. And there's there's a whole bunch of politics with return of investments that I won't I won't get into that. That's 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 a whole different type of podcast. I don't even want to talk about that on the podcast. No, I meant like that's not even our podcast. No, that's, that's another podcast. It's a it's a challenge that a lot of UX um, people deal with. Is like we glanced sh- over that briefly when we were talking a little bit about UX design. Well, okay, so I'm going to mention it briefly. I'm okay, go into this just so that the listeners know what we're talking about. So there's I'm this, curious too. There's this thing called return on investment, right? Uh-huh. And a lot of companies, and they're getting better now, but a lot of companies don't really see the value of getting involved with design before the thing is even conceptualized. But the truth of the matter is you have the most impact on the success of the product if you look at what kind of needs and, and I'm getting into human-centered design again, but if you if you identify what your product needs to do before it actually comes out, right? And that sounds really simple, mm-hmm. but um, actually incorporating the human element is what a lot of companies have problems with or had problems with. I, like I said, they're getting better. But um, proving this, like, if you spend money on me to do this, mm-hmm. it's going to be worth your time. It's really hard to do because how do you how do you measure that? Yeah, you don't know if this project's going to be a huge success or a big flop type of thing. Well, even if it is, like, how can you attribute that to the person who researched at the beginning? Like, it's a big problem for UX people, um, and so that's that's basically what I'm talking about. But let's let's. I I want to. I okay. Look, we've mentioned it time and time again, but I want to talk about what this center center design thing is. What is that? You know, and and how does it differ from regular design? Because we keep touching on it. And I keep mentioning, you kept saying, no, that's this. You know what I mean? And you, as a human factors practitioner, this is is what you do, right? Yes, yeah. So human-centered design is exactly what it sounds like, right? You design around a person. You design around the needs of that person. Mm -hmm. Um, And it sounds simple, but there's a lot of things that go into it, right? And what makes this different from regular design is if... You're just using the constraints and the needs to mm-hmm. make it make a design. You can design around that, right? But it won't necessarily fit to the human. Okay, so, okay I see okay. what you're saying. I, 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 I'm kind of getting this. Okay, so for example, let's say you build a cell phone. And, uh, all right. All right, we always use cell phones in our podcasts. Yeah. Okay, so let's say, for example, you build a cell phone. And I'm talking about like one of the 1990s cell phones or, or I guess... Flip phones, Nokia phones, things like that? No, no, no. Let's go back even further. Let's go 1960s cell phone. Wow. Hand. Handheld. Right. Landline. The brick. Okay. If you were a designer Uh that did not take into account human-centered design, Uh let's say you made a product where the microphone hung down to, um, you know, where, where your stomach is. I'd be weird. Like, okay, let's just say, for example, like, let's say the technology wouldn't allow it. Uh Uh-huh. To where, you know, like you had to have this long of a, of a cable to do this thing, right? So the microphone would hang down by your stomach and the earpiece would be up by your ear. Okay. That's not designed to the human because... That's designed they, to the elephant. Exactly. <laughs> you have to talk way down and then move it and then, you know, and you kind of saw this with the old 80s cell phones when they were really bulky and big. Right, right. They looked like the, the ones you always see in like army movies and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. And that's a matter because they couldn't fit they didn't have the technology it wasn't you know compact enough like it is now for them to be able to stick everything close enough together so that the mouthpiece is right by um you know the mouth and the earpiece is right by the ear Ah. so it was driven by the requirements and 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 the constraints Mm -hmm. of the technology of the time right that's why they looked all coiled up and huge right okay Yeah. yeah yeah 
So, I mean, this this difference, um, again, it's hard to quantify because it's, you can't, it, when it works well, you don't notice it. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. When something works well, you expect it to work well. So let's say I have Billy's Fantastic Machine here. Okay, Billy's Fantastic Machine. I have been working on building Billy's Fantastic Machine. I hand it to you. Right. A person who is a human factors practitioner and your team. Right. Of human factors practitioners. And I was like, does this Billy's Fantastic Machine work? Right. And you would then do what? That's a good question. So, um, so to include, uh, basically what I would do is I would include the user in the design, right? Mm-hmm. So this is actually what happens a lot of the time is, is people have created this product and they realize, oh no, it doesn't, you know, it, the, it our, doesn't u- work. our users are saying this is not as great as we thought it was. Uh huh. It happens more often than you think. So that's when people come to us at my company and, and they say, all right, help us out with this. Like what, what can we do? Right. Mm-hmm. This is, this is what we have. Please, please help us out with this. And so, um, so basically what we do then at that point is we kind of incorporate the user into the design. So, you know, and, and there's, um, uh, there's, there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of different methods um, that you can include the user in the design, right? So you can do things like observation. You can watch the user interact with this product. Right. You can have them think aloud, which is exactly what it sounds like. You know, as you use this product, think aloud uh, say out loud what you're thinking, mm-hmm. so that way I know what's going through your head as you use this product. Right, um, and that gives you insights on what to fix. Right, you can also do things like interviews where you sit down with them and say like, "You just went here and did this with our thing." You could do those kind of interviews, or you could do the ones that kind of rework the entire problem. Right, like sit down and say, "Okay, what are your needs? What are your goals? What what kind of?" Things, what do you use our product for mostly? What, yeah, what kind of things do you need to produce from this product, mm-hmm. right? And and you know and just kind of revisit the problem from step one. And sometimes it's better to just scrap an idea and start from square one if it's built from the ground up. Like you know, assuming that you have time and resources to do this, mm-hmm. right? If you start from from the ground up you're much more likely to get a system or a product that's tailored to what the user needs, Mm. right? So so that's another thing you can do is you can sit there and interview them and say, all right, you know, what is it exactly that you need to do? Uh, What is it that you're trying to do? And what do you need at the end of the day to walk home with? Okay, okay, okay. You can also do surveys to kind of figure out, like, what your target demographic is, right? Like, what's your age? What's your gender? Um, you know, how do you use uh, similar products? This is how they people do like product testing or 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 uh, a market research type of thing. Yeah, a lot of market research uses surveys. Um, you can also use surveys like after something's done. So like, there's this thing called the system usability scale, right? Um, which is it's it's a pretty. I think we mentioned it before. I'm not sure if we have. Um, but it's a quick and dirty sort of way of measuring like how effective a product is in terms of usability, and so uh, it's just like a ten item survey that you know you ask people like how cumbersome was this? How you know, did uh, I feel like I need the technical uh, assistance of somebody to to help me out with this? So it's, it's kind of like the heuristic scale that we use when we make uh, things like that. Uh, a little bit, but it's a little bit. It's. It's like more they're... towards it's more geared towards the usability of okay. it, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's kind of asking the user, and and the great thing about this is it's it's not heuristics. It's just what do you, as the user, think about this thing? Like, it's is it usable basically? And that's what you're trying to derive from that survey. Mm, mm, mm. Now, from uh, surveys and interviews, you can basically come up with these flowcharts that kind of go through the process of how a user might attack um, a certain task or, uh, or a goal they might have, right? And, and you can lay it out and kind of go through the flow of how a user might interact. Uh, well, you can do it with like how they currently interact with something or how they might interact with something in the future. Uh, basically, you just map out these flow charts that kind of explain... You know, this so is, you kind of just gather up all the data together to come up with a larger picture of what will 
what needs to be and what could be. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, you got it. All right, all right. There are other methods, too. There's a ton of methods that um, that scientists use to uh, to to help out with this, right? And, and you know, not all of it is... Um, User based, you can you can even do some modeling uh-huh. or or simulation, right? So you can say like it takes the average human 0.5 seconds to hit a key. I don't think that's right. I think it's actually quicker, right, to hit a key on a keyboard. Right. And they need to hit 20 keys to accomplish this task, and then click a mouse and move it this far. Uh-huh. You can model that. Right. You, you can say like, look, here's here's the way they do it now, uh-huh. and it takes 20 seconds to do. Uh. Here's the proposed way, and it takes ten seconds to do. That's a fifty percent. That's one hundred and fifty percent. And you can just do this both through computers. Well, it, you can do it with anything, right? You, all you have to know is like how how far do they have to go? What's the moving speed? And um, you know what what kind of it gets tricky when you have to estimate like how long do they have to think about something, right? That's uh-huh. that's when it gets tricky. Right. You kind of take the average, it seems like. Yeah, and you can still model it out, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, there, there's different ways of doing that. So, and then I mentioned earlier prototyping. Mm-hmm. Right, so this is, this is, uh, prototyping is pretty standard in the design process. Um, but the way uh, human-centered design uses prototyping is a little different so they um it's not much different but they they kind of just bust them out they don't really focus on the fidelity of the prototype like when you think of prototype you think of something that's actually working right you can you can have a prototype with paper right like here's my interface with sticky notes right how would you expect this to work well i would click on this button over here um, oh okay so kind of so like like if they put it all into a binder it's like all right, if you go here, do that. Oh, it's, like a choose, it's like a choose-your-own-adventure. Exactly, yeah. You got it. You make a choose-your-own-adventure story for the user to do, and it still gives you you know, insight as to where they will go on this paper, or on this you know, on the actual interface once mm-hmm. it's... But the beauty of this is that you don't use uh, valuable resources in man hours and licensing. You're literally just cutting out pieces of paper. And the great thing is, like, if they say, well, you know what, I would like that better if it was over here, guess what? You, It's a sticky note, so you can pick it up and put it over there and say, okay, now how does that feel? Oh, okay. Kind of like in all those old 80s sitcoms when they learn how to drive. They use, like, a couple of cans for the gas and the brake and things like that, and they move it around to try to make it feel like a car without actually going to the car. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So you mentioned usability testing. Yeah, so usability testing is when you basically take a user through uh, the prototype, right? And mm-hmm. and this is basically what we were just talking about, right? You have the user, say, uh, perform a task, mm-hmm. right? And these are the tasks that you've written up in the flows or, or you know, the tasks that you're expecting them to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have them sit there and you basically go through this task with them and say, all right, where are your trouble spots? Where, you know, where are your pain points? Where are the... Places where you're having trouble, mm-hmm. um, and you can you can you know ask them questions during it. This is where you would do all the things that we just talked about. This is where you would observe. This is where you would have them do a think aloud, right? This is where you'd um, sort of interview them afterwards and ask them how they thought you know the the thing was going. Um, you know, this is this is basically where everything comes together. Mm-hmm. And based on this usability test, you basically uh, can can sort of gather these task performance metrics, right? So how well do they complete this task? And some of those would be like, how long did it take them to complete the task, right? And we talked about that with modeling and simulation, but this is actual user data, right? How long does it take this user to get from point A to point B? Uh-huh. Right? Um, you can also measure things like completion rates, Mm-hmm. How long it takes them, like we were talking about. Well, that's 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 time on task. But completion, oh, okay. completion rates would be, did they finish it or not? Were they able to complete the task? Mm-hmm. Right? You know, like 80% of the people were able to do it. That's Is mm, that good? It depends on what you're trying to do. All right. Um, and the it difficulty de- of it. It depends. It right? depends. It depends. Ah, look what we did there. there. We go. Yeah, it, it always depends uh, on human factors cast. And... In real life, it always depends. There's never a cut and dry answer to anything. Mm-hmm. It all depends on a certain point of view. <laughs> a certain point of view. Did you see the Rogue One trailer? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was kind of floored by it. Floored? You were yeah, floored. Because, like, in a good way or a bad way? Well, because I was a little worried about it. You were worried about Rogue One. Yeah, I wanted... You were worried I about... Wanted, I, wanted, I wanted Saving Private Ryan. Okay. Right? And when I saw the first trailer, it just seemed like another Star Wars episode. Oh, okay. Which is fine. Which I would have had fun about, but I was a little disappointed. Because I wanted, like, you know, the average, you know, rebel soldier versus the average stormtrooper... Going for an objective, or maybe a bunch of Bothans, which I thought were giant blotfile looking creatures. There's okay, so Bothans have been represented in a variety of different ways throughout the old expanded universe, which is now Legends. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And, yeah, oh, and it, we're, but yeah. Anyway, so you liked the trailer? I liked it. I, I it brought me back to the idea of what it's going to be, which is a military epic. I want a military epic for that show. I want a military movie. And you think it's going to happen? I think... I'm, I'm starting to believe it more and more. I still think it's more going to be like The Dirty Dozen, which is great for me, or Inglorious Bastards was. That's something along those lines. Yeah, no, it looks great. And so I actually recorded a reaction video. And if any of our listeners want to see my beautiful face... It's a beautiful face. Bo- remind me in a second, Billy, to... To talk about something that we did before the show today that I want everybody to know about. But okay, anyway, okay, okay. so I did a reaction video. If you guys want to see this reaction video to the new Rogue One trailer, you can check out my YouTube channel, Nick R. That's N I C K A R one two four. So I posted this reaction video. I was, I was, I'm really excited for this. I'm so excited. I can you barely get started by Star uh, Wars all the time. You I are love Star, Star Wars. Wars. We had a Star Wars reference at the beginning of this. It's Episode <laughs> Six. Rogue One's going to be awesome. I'd really like to go back and listen to all the podcasts and see if there was ever a podcast that we didn't have a Star Wars. Reference. The first two. Remember, I said I can't believe we're the third one in. We have. <laughs> anyway. You're right. Absolutely, you're right. Huh? Yeah. All right. So, so yeah. Uh, to get back on that thing that I wanted to plug. So before the show today, mm-hmm. we actually did this really cool thing where we hung out on Facebook. Right, yeah. We uh, we hung out on Facebook and said hi to some of our listeners. Which um, was really awesome. It was. You know, I was I was sitting around a little bit for w- waiting for Billy to show up. So you'll just see me for a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, I come by uh, towards the end there. Yeah, I mean, he comes through about, California how, traffic. It's about 45 minutes long. And I didn't even realize it was that long. We were just hanging out. Yeah, it was great. So, I mean, we're just hanging out with you guys, um, and, and it's a great chance for us to all interact. So, please, next week, just look out for it. Um, like we said in the cast this week, you know, it it really kind of depends on the day that we're available, but keep keep an eye out. You know, whenever you see us active on Facebook, that's a good tell. You that, can always like our Facebook page and get a notifier, and it'll notify you when we go live. Absolutely. Yeah, we went live, so yeah, again, we said hi. It was really fun. I think I think we'll do it every week be just a good way you can hang out with us not to mention the fact that if you can't like say for example you're in the middle of work you, we always save these things on our facebook yeah so yeah, yeah always watch them go check it out on facebook mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh where were we task performance <laughs> metrics ah <laughs> uh, yes tax <laughs> performance metrics wow All right. so okay so we went over time on task and completion rates right right the last one would be, uh, well, not the last one, but one of the other major ones that I typically collect is like uh, measures of efficiency, right? And this would be like, how many errors did they make while going through this task? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so th- all that to say, there's a variety of different ways that um, you can basically include the user into the design process, right? They're not designing it themselves, but their input is invaluable to you in how you sort of go through the process of design and sort of incorporate what you know and how you research the problem and, and uh, you know, uh, develop it based on the user needs. Mm-hmm. Because okay. that's, that's ultimately what makes a great product is, is, you know, if it, like I said earlier, if it works great, you hardly realize that it's, it's doing its job because it's doing it. It's, so it's kind of like the idea of like uh, you, you when you give it to somebody to actually look at, to check out, to see if they can do it right. You go and you hand them the thing and it's like, okay, they hit the wrong button there or they would want go back when they intended to go forward. And you keep all that data of how does it work, how does it do things like yeah, that. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, exactly that. That's exactly what we do. And we, we make... Um, that's That's at the base, right? And then... We do. It's so weird when people do that, especially like things in video games. It seems like because like, you know, the lower button was always the button to jump, and sometimes people put it as like 
another button or or or, or like up sprint on in no man's sky why is that on the right stick it's... it is weirdest thing in the world isn't it it takes me so good yeah. used to yeah. or the idea that boost is is square instead of circle that's so weird to me because i keep trying to land when i'm trying to boost uh, yeah so yeah. that would that would go into the idea of completion Commence- rates right i mean time on task uh what would uh, the idea of like how a mapping goes and things like that. That would be more of um, measures of efficiency, right? Are they able to do this? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because they're, it... they're able to do this without creating errors. Right. All like right, with see, you. I'm learning. I'm learning this. I get this now. Exactly, yeah. With you, if uh, you, you probably make a lot of errors. And that's not your fault. That's not your fault. Wow, way to throw me under a bus and make I'm... me feel stupid. <laughs> It's not your fault. <laughs> Look, it's it's the developers. Or does it p- depend? <laughs> We're really milking this. It depends. <laughs> no, so it is the developer's fault in some sense for not playtesting that enough and mm-hmm. saying, oh, look, a lot of our players are pressing circle to land and or to circle to boost. And, you know, Instead of, and then square or whatever, to land. Whatever, you yeah, just, whatever, it whatever you said. Yeah, and, you know, if they looked at that and said, okay, wow, a lot of our users are doing that, then we should probably make it that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's so. Yeah, that's that's all usability testing, and so what we do on top of that is basically incorporate that all into the next iteration of the design. Mm. And I'm I'm really simplifying it there, and it's hard for me to detach myself and say like, you know, we take a lot of time and care and and put thought into where you know, these buttons go and where, what visual systems are being used in, in the product. And it's, I'm really simplifying this. You're right. Well, yeah. I mean, we, the problem with our podcast is also the fact that we talk about these things. We go over these details and we try to get into as much detail and research as we can. Billy, I'm going to stop you there because you said the problem with this podcast, there is no problem with this podcast. You're right. You're right. But, no, Our this, shortcoming is is that we there don't is have... no shortcoming with this podcast. <laughs> the goal, yeah. the goal of this podcast is to kind of break this down and into its most simple form and let everybody kind of be aware of this and know that these things exist and to think about it when it's you're. Like, it's like a delicious box of chocolates. We just nibble think... little pieces here and there, and then we were like, "Oh my gosh, I love these caramel filled ones!" And then you get a whole box of them. Yeah, and I mean, we'll get into the caramel episodes later, right? <laughs> oh, I love caramel. Like, we're nibbling the caramel right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll do a whole episode on, on task task performance metrics. I love that. I'm excited about that. S- somewhere down the line. I get excited about pretty much anything, but I'm always <laughs> excited about things on this podcast. I'm always excited about task performance metrics. Woo! Woo! Party! Yeah! He doesn't pay oh, me or nothing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll Man, do I, 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 I do get excited. No, I, I, I really do mean to do. We've been sitting here for a long time. I mean, you know, we're in six episodes, you know, and we've talked about things some people would find really dry. But the problem, but, the, but the great thing about it is, is that you make these things accessible and entertaining. Like, I, I enjoy my time. No, I really do enjoy my time doing this. Like some people might see, hear like task time on task or metrics of performance and be like. Wow, that just sounds dull. But no, these things are actually really interesting because they fit in to every aspect of our daily life. They do. And it's things we don't think about, but it's amazing. It's kind of like uh, Louis C.K. once said. It's like, we're not impressed that there are, is a big, giant, two-ton hunk of metal that... Flying through the sky. Flying through yep. the sky. We are breaking the laws of a planet. Flying. But people are upset about the packs of peanuts. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. I'm See, excited about the fact that we are rocketing through the sky right now of design. Right. And and that's the thing, too, is like like I said, like two or three times already, <laughs> if it's working properly, you don't notice it. Exactly. You are and, an unsung hero of modern technology. Oh, thanks, man. Mm-hmm. No, all I'm saying is that, that work does go into this, and that's what we're trying to bring awareness to. Yeah, I think so, too. But... Awareness to it, what are the benefits right. of including a user? Well, I mean, we kind of covered this, but the the benefit, obviously, and, and this goes back to return on investment, um, but basically, if you include the user, uh-huh. you will end up with a product 
that is tailored to their specific needs mm -hmm. for the task that you're hoping to uh, accomplish or that the, the they're hoping to accomplish, right? Um, and so, yeah, if you keep all this in mind, it's it's just going to be a better product all around for them. But everybody should keep this in mind. Even big companies hire huge teams, but if you're just working on your own with your own little invention yeah, or if, website or if, anything... If you're an indie dev working on a game, if you're an app developer working in Silicon Valley off of, you know, uh, seed money from your parents, then, like, keep these things in mind. Like, I'm, I'm not being derogatory at all towards no. anybody. I'm just saying, if, if you're doing this stuff... Just try to keep this in mind, and your product will be leaps and bounds better. Because even... those huge developers, those huge developers that you're talking about, they, they have... have someone tapping on their shoulders saying, hold on a minute. You might not have that opportunity, but you're working right. really hard to make the best product you can. If so. if you're freelance, if yeah, if you're if you're by yourself, like this is this is the best time to kind of take into these things into account because you could be so wrapped up, like I said earlier with the design of something that when you make a prototype, you know how it works. And if you test it, of course it'll come off great user testing because it's you and you know how that thing works. But the second you show that to somebody else, they might not know. They might not get it, right? Or no. they might see through something you didn't even see coming. Right. You know, I mean, that's just... And 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 that's, that's such an important thing that's overlooked. And it's best intentions. You know, I, I know this works. I believe in what I'm doing. But no one's to stop you and be like, you forgot to put this there, or you put everything on the left side, but most people are right-handed. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, stuff like that. And, you know, it, like I said, it can be used anywhere. And I bet you, I, 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 I don't know for a fact with this, but I bet you it could even work in, like, entertainment. So, obviously, it works in video games because it's interactive. I bet you it could work in, like, TV and movies, too. Have you seen... Stranger Things yet? Yeah, I saw it. I, I, you told me to watch it, and I, yeah. I, I've been sitting watching the episodes. It's really great. I'm really happy that the three synth players that exist in our world have gotten a lot of work in that TV show. They did. <laughs> it's really creepy. Not to mention that I can look at all the little nerd games and boards and old second edition D&D stuff they oh. have there, and I look at it and I'm like... I know that thing. I know that thing. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted that thing. Plays on your childhood. It plays on I'm really like the excited 80s. I'm really that they focus on the Demogorgon. Oh, I mean, man. you don't get it. You don't get it. I get it. But I get it. The Demogorgon was the scariest thing on two legs. <laughs> or four if you if it was charging it. We should do a D&D &D game. Or like a D&D &D episode. I would love to do something along those lines. Maybe like you would. talk about how you would... like. I would love to be able to present you with a thing. With a thing. With a thing. Like, here's a thing. And right. you could be like, look at how they did this. Or look how they did that. Or maybe, like, what kind of... Put your scientific mind to how we would do it. Like, if someone presented to you, like, a project. You know what? I just got an excellent idea. Uh -huh. We should have our listeners send us in a board game. Oh, that would be awesome. It could be anything from, like... It could be like a $10 board game, like Shoots and Ladders, or something you even made yourself. Or you could send us your apps. Yes. Or your websites. Yes, we will review you know what? We'll look over that. Just send it to us. We'll review it. We're kind of short on things to review, uh, just because we've been talking about some really heavy stuff. Yeah, we've been uh, getting through We've been getting through the good stuff. We've been, we have been. So that more people can be informed when we go into reviews. Right, right, exactly, yeah. We, we kind of put reviews on the back burner, but I think we're going to start bringing it back. Mm. So if you guys have anything you wanted to review, let us know. Just like we were talking about earlier, when we were talking about the idea of design. You know, you might believe in this project, and it still might be an amazing, awesome thing. But some... but. But Nick is one of those people, he is one of those human factors practitioners who could tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, you might want to consider this. Or yeah. you might want to think about that. And that's expensive in the real world, I would imagine. It's, it's pretty pricey. Yeah, it's pretty pricey. You should see the Tesla he drives. No, I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, someday. All right. So anyway, no review today, but this is the part of the show where we take questions from you guys, our listeners, Billy, our question today. Samantha writes, you guys are awesome and make my week. Wow, Samantha, that's... <laughs> wow, that's... That's, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty high. generous. That's pretty generous. Wow, we make her weak. Wow. Have you heard the Nerdist podcast? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, you're one of my new favorite podcasts. 
Are you guys going to HFES this year? And if so, are you presenting anything that I can come see? What is... I, short answer, no, because I don't even know what an HFES is. And if you kidnap me again, Key's going to have a problem with that. <laughs> I'm not going to kidnap you. Okay, so I think it's good that you don't know what HFES is. Right. Because if I read this question, I'd be like, yeah, of course I'm going, uh, blah, blah, blah. And to our listeners, that might make no sense at all. So, yes, HFES. That is Human Factors and Ergonomic Society. And I'm guessing by... It sounds fancy, like you're all meeting... Like mad scientists all meeting together in your fortress of doom. You know, you know what? That's almost exactly what it is. It's a bunch of human factors practitioners. Yeah, human factor scientists, um, psychology scientists, uh, all meeting in one building, sharing their ideas and taking over the world. And taking over. Well, this year it's in Washington D.C. So we're starting in D.C. and that'll eventually spread. Wow, just Last... going straight for that. Brass ring there, huh? <laughs> Last year it was in Los Angeles, um, but yeah. So, so HFES, uh, it's it's basically where um, yeah, all these scientists get together and share their ideas, and and there's uh, poster presentations where it's basically the academic version of you know when you were in high school or middle school and you did those threefold. Oh my gosh! Posters are you kidding me? About you guys are gonna have a science fair? Basically. <laughs> I, I, that is so cute. I hate to degrade us to that level, but that's exactly what we're doing. And, you know, the ideas on these posters are so, sometimes can be so, um, you know, fundamental to the way that we conduct research and the way that we do these methods in our jobs that this this is a great opportunity for professionals to generate a lot of ideas and for professionals to network with each other. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I, I met up with, I, my LinkedIn account probably went up by, like, 20, 30 people last year because of, it's like MySpace back in, in the... You're, you're rubbing elbows with the human factor elite. Yeah, well, it's like MySpace back in the early 2000s, you know? Oh, I barely know you. Let's be friends on MySpace. And so this is, the LinkedIn is like that now. So the Human factors elite society. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what it sounds like uh, is, is either that Samantha is either a graduate student or she's a scientist as well, asking if we're going. Um, the short answer is Billy's not going. Um, because it's it's way too expensive, and honestly, I really don't like being the dumbest person in a room. <laughs> Billy, you're learning so much, though. By the end of this podcast in, like, 20 years, you will have learned... <laughs> You Do you think they're going to give me an honorary uh, degree in human acting practitioner? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? It's like, what's your job experience? I heard a really smart guy for like 20 years talk <laughs> about this stuff. Just, you know, we kind of just glanced over stuff and talked about Star Wars a bunch, but really there was some meat to those conversations. Real meat. <laughs> so, so yes, I am going. Um, I will be there. And if you see me, please say hi. Um, I don't bite. I'm really friendly. Love to get to know you, have a conversation. Um, but I'm not presenting anything. Uh, I'm mostly going there to network and uh, kind of to develop professionally. So, and, um, and when you guys are all hanging out outside the professional thing, you might be dropping a podcast maybe. Uh... You know, I don't know. Because I'll be gone that week. We should, we should either record in advance or maybe like Skype together and, uh, and, and do it that way. We'll probably record in advance just to have something down on paper. You know, it's always good to have that. And then Skype can be so problematic. I don't know. It would be it would be really cool to do a live. For you just H- don't want to hang out with me anymore, do you? No, I do. I do. <laughs> I'm just saying it would be a cool thing since this is a Human Factors cast to do a live from HFES podcast. I mean, I suppose that would be really great. How would we ha- hook up the idea? I mean, we would have to discuss how. We'll discuss how it we offline. It. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Look forward to it in the future. We might do a live from HFES. Uh, podcast. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, if you guys want to be featured on our show like Samantha today, we are all over the social media and we are all over the internet now. Yeah. Um, again, you can find us at iTunes, Google Play Store, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spreaker, Blueberry, uh, Player FM, Podcast Addicts, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Go ahead and send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. With all of your questions, don't don't be afraid. We we read it all. 
And, uh, you know, we go through them all. We might not answer it on the show, but we do go through everything you guys send us. And you know what? Even if you have an interesting anecdote or story about something that we talked about on the show that resonated with you, send that in, too. We love reading that stuff, and we might actually read that on the show. Or if you want clarification on anything that we talk about. Those Absolutely. Those show ideas or something we can cover. I've listened to our podcast, and I've been wrong a couple of times. So if you want to call me out on it, email me, too. Ooh, it's like finding <laughs> it. Go get them, trolls. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, be, be sure to like follow, subscribe, all that stuff on all the social media. We're always trying to keep in touch with interesting topics that you guys want us to talk about. Like I said earlier, we're going to be on Facebook now mm. every week at some point. So check us out there. We'll hang out with you. I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on LinkedIn.com slash Nick Rome. Billy Hall. Where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter, or they can find me streaming on YouTube at Comstar Cleric. You're streaming on YouTube? What are you streaming? Uh, right now, it's No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. But uh, sometimes I get on, we actually do uh, a little bit of Destiny. We're going to be probably doing a lot of that when the new game comes out. Plus, I like just being able to play a lot of different games, so we'll see what we can do. All right, well, thanks again for listening uh, to us here on Human Factors Cast. Until next time, it, it depends. depends.